Okay, excellent. So uh, now we're gonna talk a little bit about building a budget. It's difficult to build a budget if you don't have some sort of a background to work with. So we're gonna all work with the kind of the same background. And then obviously when you build your own budget, you'll have to put your own information in. But in order for us to have kind of a common history to work with, we're gonna work through the simulation together. So what I'd first like to say is congratulations. If I can get my, there we go. Congratulations. You have all just graduated college. How fantastic. How wonderful, right? Not only did you graduate college, but you just got a job, too. It's amazing, right? So let's take a look at our job that we got. So you got a job from a big-time company, and this job is going to pay you $45,000 a year. Yes, fantastic. So now, fortunately for you, though, $45,000 a year, let's say you get a monthly check, that's going to be $3,750 a month. Do you get to bring that home? Of course not, right? Your Uncle Sam's going to take his cut. You're going to get state and federal taxes that'll come out of that. You'll have to pay benefits and things of that nature. You'll probably end up netting about $2,500 a month. So that's going to be our net income that we're going to work with when we build our budget. And let's say that while you were going through college, you did really good. You were saving money for your future. You got some uh, friends and relatives that gave you some monetary gifts when you graduated college. And because of all of that, you were able to save $7,500. So you have $7,500 sitting in a savings account, and you got this fancy new job earning $2,500 a month in net income. So your challenge when you build a budget is how are you going to be able to live comfortably, right? Make your payments, uh, make all your loan payments and your monthly bills, and still be able to save money. That's our challenge. All right, now first things first though, right? You just got a brand new job, you're gonna move to a whole new city, you got to rent an apartment. All right, now, a couple of things we have to fit, uh, factor in this apartment that we're going to rent. Um, we're, we are going to be living in a major metropolitan area that is not near our parents. So unfortunately, living with mom and dad is not going to be an option, all right? So we got to find our own apartment. And you don't have any friends or family that live in the area either. So you're not going to be able to live with them either, okay? So you do some searching. You find a nice apartment in a nice apartment complex. And um, you find this apartment for $1,000 a month and they're gonna charge you a thousand dollar security deposit. But if you damage the apartment in any way, um, then the security deposit is held to be able to pay for those damages when you move out. Uh, when you move out, if you don't bring the apartment at all, would you get the security deposit? You're back? reading my mind, because that was my exact next comment. She's exactly, what's your name? Sarah. Sarah's exactly right. If you don't damage the apartment while you live there, then you absolutely will get that thousand dollars back when you move, okay? So we've got uh, our $1,000 uh, a month. Now, of course, remember, we haven't even gotten our first paycheck yet, right? So where does our first month's rent and our security deposit have to come from? Our savings account. So flip over your, um, your budget worksheet, right? I forgot to have you do this initially. Write savings account across the top, right? We got $7,500 in our savings account. And so then right underneath that, go ahead and write rent slash security deposit. That's 2000 how much we have left in our savings? All right, we started off with 7,500. Our rent and security deposit for the first month is 2,000. So we subtract that out of savings, how much we have left? $5,500, right? 5,500. So that's what we're working with now in our savings. Let's move on. All right, so you got an apartment. Next thing you're going to need, remember your apartment is 10 miles away from your job. And there's not real good um, uh, uh, public transportation in this particular area, so you're going to need a car, all right? So there's a lot of options when you buy a car. You could get a used Honda Civic for maybe 14000 Maybe you want to go a little fancier and get a, a Mustang, or maybe you're into those SUVs and you want a Suburban, all right? All right, so these are your options. Yes? Well, then you wouldn't be able to buy a car, but remember, we're doing a simulation, so we're all going off that same information because we have to have kind of a common history to be able to build a budget together. Otherwise, when you do your own budget, obviously, if you don't have a driver's license, you're not going to be able to do this particular piece of it. Yes? Are we in a situation where, like, there's no trains around? Right. Or, like, no buses? good public uh, transportation, so you've got to okay. get a car. Yeah. 
All right, so you decide you're gonna put $4,000 down on the car. You haven't gotten a first paycheck, where does that come from? It does gonna come from savings. So if you do that, right, then you're gonna, your loan for your Honda Civic will be 207 a month. Your Mustang will be uh, 332, and your Chevy will ultimately cost you 435. So which one do you pick? That's exactly right, because remember, right, we just got our first job, right, we've got only $2,500 that we're working with. Not only do we need to make sure that we're saving money on our monthly payment, but we also need a car that's going to give us good gas mileage because we have to drive 10 miles. That's 20 miles a day we're driving back and forth to work. And so because we're on a limited income, my best recommendation in our simulation would be the Honda Civic. So on your budget worksheet, write $207 down for your car payment. Right, $1,000 for your rent, we already know that. And you got, uh, and this is on the front of your budget worksheet, right? So we'll put $1,000 for rent, and now we're gonna put $207 in for your car payment. All right, so how does this impact our savings account, right? Go to the back of your budget worksheet again, write down payment, 4,000. How much you have left in your savings account? 1,500, oh, man, that goes fast, doesn't it? We just had 7,500, now we're down to 15. All right, all right, we're getting there. Okay, so now you've got an apartment and a car, but you have nothing in your apartment. All right, well you gotta get a few little things to build your apartment, right? You gotta furnish it. So you gotta ask yourself a couple of questions. When you furnish your apartment, are you gonna go to a furniture store? Or are you gonna go to a discount store? I was Goodwill's best customer for the first 10 years after I moved out of my parents' home. Right, everything I bought was at Goodwill. There's no shame in going to a discount store. I love it. The Discovery Store over off of Branham um, is one of my favorite stores, Branham and Almaden. I still actually go there to this day. All right, so let's say that you are going to allow yourself to spend $1,250 on furnishing your apartment, okay? Because we got a budget, we got that in our savings account, so we're gonna work with that as our budget. But if you're able to make some smart decisions, maybe you don't even have to spend that entire 1250 so let's see how that works so the first thing that you want to get of course or, or um, let's see let's get this thing to come so what are some ways that you might save money when you're furnishing your apartment one of the first things that you need to get is a bed so you've got some options right you can get a mattress or you can actually get a real bed or even an actually fancy bed right what do you pick Right. These are the things you have to think about, right? Again, we're just barely getting started, so the best bet here is to start low. We don't want to blow our entire 1250 just on the bed. We have a lot of other things we need to furnish our apartment with. So the best option is to start small. Get a mattress with a tiny little frame. Again, you're working your way up. I, I lived on the twin bed that I grew up in my entire life for the first 10 years before I was able to buy another bed. All right, you need a dresser, right? You can't live out of your suitcase forever. Got some options there as well, right? We can get, buy one that we put together from Ikea, or maybe we want some an actual nice dresser, or maybe we want a really nice on wall kind of dresser with a mirror and everything. What do you pick? Well, you've got four drawers, six drawers, and eight drawers. But you, that would be a, 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 an, an indicator, right? You need storage, but again, remember, we only got $1,250 in our budget, so we have to be really careful. I bought my first dresser from Target for 40 bucks. It came in 5,000 pieces. But that thing, I used that thing for 10 years, and it was great, it worked really well. My recommendation, again, we need to save money, so I would recommend that we purchase option one, and, uh, and so right now we've spent three, 450 of our budget. The next thing we have to get is a nightstand, maybe. I can't get my computer to respond to me. Do you need a nightstand? Think about it. Maybe a desk. Do you, do you gotta have something, on? right? You gotta put your alarm clock on something. You need a light by your bed. Where are you gonna put your phone when you go to sleep? Or maybe a drink of water. You need something, right? So there's a lot of options, right? You could go to um, uh, and get a nice little uh, um, option that's nice and cheap. Uh, you can get a nicer um, stand with a beautiful drawer, or even a really nice two drawer nightstand. A lot of options. Keep stealing my thunder, right? Because. When you do decide which one you want to pick, sometimes you might need to get a little bit creative, right? I'm telling you, that this is exact. I actually just flipped over a cardboard box and put a towel on it, all right? 
That's what I did for the first two years after I moved out of the house. We lived with boxes as tables and coffee tables and things of that nature. All right, we're moving on to our kitchen. Um, do you need a uh, kitchen table? You know, it is something that would be helpful to have, right? And so you've got a lot of options there, right? We can go nice and inexpensive, or you can get some wooden options or even some nice fancy bench options. But what what else could we potentially do? Milk crate. <laughs> It'd be a little hard to eat dinner maybe on a milk crate. But you know, for the first five years I had my own house, I borrowed my mom's card table put a tablecloth over it. It was fancy. If anybody bumped the table, oh goodness, all the milk's going over it. It's just the way it was. But this, that's, that was my kitchen table for the first couple of years after I moved out of the house. All right. You also need to fill the kitchen with things, right? I can't eat uh, my dinner and if I don't have pots and pans and kitchen things to do so with. So I've got to go out and purchase those as well, right? we got a lot of options when we're purchasing. I know I'm going through this quickly. I'm sorry, but we're running out of time. So we do have a lot of options here. So which one do you pick? I didn't pick any of these when I moved out. I went to Goodwill. I got a pot, a pan, um, some bowls, some mixing spoons, and uh, I got everything I needed. It was 15 bucks. I'm telling you, I was, like I said, Goodwill's best customer when I moved out of house. They've got tons of stuff. And so, and it doesn't just have to be Goodwill, but any kind of a discount store, right? And so anytime you're able to be frugal in your budget, that just leaves more money in your savings account. So these are the kinds of decisions that you have to make when you're trying to furnish your first apartment. All right, you do need a couch as well for your living room. Maybe. Come on. There it is, it's coming. All right, so when you furnish your living room, you got a couple of options there as well. I'm a big fan of the futon, right? It's a nice, cheap option, especially if you've got a um, studio apartment, because what could this also be? Oh, oh, hallelujah. Save 350 on that side, because that's only 200. Now I got a couch and a bed. Awesome, right? But you got some other options, right? We can go fancier. Uh, we can do I mean, a leather recliner and blow our complete budget. So which one do you pick? Absolutely, right? Again, we're trying to go cheap. Remember, we did have a budget of $1,250 to furnish our apartment. So let's go back to our savings log on the back of our worksheets and put furnish, furnishings is 1250 Again, if you were able to make some better decisions and be a little bit more frugal in your shopping, maybe you don't have to spend the full 1250 but again, we're doing our simulation, so we're gonna put 1250 How much is left in our savings? My God, we started with 7500 All we did is get an apartment, buy a car, and furnish the apartment, and now we still, we've only got $250 left in our savings. Again, if we were able to make more frugal decisions, we might be able to have a little bit left over in there. All right, so now that we've got, we're ready to go, we're going to get our very first paycheck. Let's budget how we're going to spend that first paycheck. So turn back to the front of your budget worksheet. Our first two sections have already been completed for us, right? So the first one was rent, right? We said that was 1000 and then our car was 207 So next one is car insurance. The industry average for um, uh, students just out of college is about $233 for your insurance. We're just going to use that. If you can find a better insurance policy, you can save some money here. But again, we're just using an industry average. So $233 for your insurance. How much do industry experts recommend that you save every month? 10%. That is exactly right, 10%. So our salary, right, is $2,500 a month. How much should we be putting into savings? Two fifty. That is exactly right. And people say, "Well, gosh, I don't have a whole lot of money. Why am I putting this into savings? Why? Why do you want to put ten percent of your your money into savings?" Rainy day. Rainy day. But what also are you trying to do? Do you want to live in this apartment forever? Do you want the Honda used Honda Civic forever? Right. These are things you have to think about your future, guys. If you're not putting money into a savings account every single month, you are not planning for your future. So not only is, should 10% be going into your savings, this is not something we can touch if our budget is not balanced either. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, the next thing we need is groceries. So this is a monthly budget, remember. So I'm budgeting $280 a month in groceries. How many people think that's too much money? You gonna spend $280 a month in groceries? 
Well, think about it. Do you know how much that actually calculates down to a day? $10 a day, right? Remember, we got three meals to eat, and we're just budgeting $10 a day for groceries. That's not a whole lot, right? Now, I'll tell you what. When I first moved out, I lived on TV dinners, Top Ramen, and Chili. I could buy a box of Top Ramen for less than five bucks and eat on that thing for a week. It was fabulous. And so you can make those kinds of decisions eventually, but we're going to go with $10 a day for groceries, which equates to $280 a month in groceries. Now, household cleaning. Does that mean you get an actual house cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> not in your first apartment. What we're talking about here is monthly, you're going to need to buy cleaning supplies, right? You're going to need paper towels. You're going to need pine saw and Windex and those kinds of things. And so you'll want to make sure you put money aside in the budget to be able to buy things that you'll be able to clean your house with. Now, what about eating out? Are we going to go out to eat at all on our first, our first budget? Probably not. You know, it would be nice to think that, right? This is the problem with a lot of people when they build a budget, though is they don't build a realistic budget, and they wonder why they can't live up to it. Is it realistic to say, you will never, ever, 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 ever eat out? That's not realistic. It's not, you're right. absolutely right. We gotta put something in here, because it's, we're going to be doing it. So what I'm gonna say is we're gonna start off with 100 bucks. It's a month. That really only gives us 25 bucks a week to eat out, right? So we're not going to Chili's, that's for sure, unless we're only paying for ourselves. Because remember, 25 bucks a week, you got 21 meals, right? You go, to, you go to a fast food restaurant, and you probably spent 10 bucks just there. And that's almost half of your weekly budget to eat out. And so this is why we got to put a little bit in here, because it's not realistic. If you think about how many of those 21 meals each week do you stop by real quick and get a McDonald's or a Burger King or something along those lines. It will be very easy to get to that 25 bucks a week if you're even doing just a couple of meals um, at a fast food restaurant. All right, personal hygiene. So what we're talking about here for girls and boys is a little different, right? Girls, we need makeup and, and uh, shampoos and all those wonderful things. Uh, boys, you know, razors and shaving cream, things like that. This also includes haircuts and other types of manicures if you want to get that kind of stuff. And so 60 bucks a month, again, when you're including all of that, including haircuts and things of that nature, it's really not a whole lot of money. Um, I have a friend that could spend that in one hour at the nail salon. All right, so entertainment is next. So what do we think about that? Are we gonna go out and do some, uh, um, like go to the movies or do any sort of entertainment? Again, if you say no, I'm gonna stick to my budget, is it realistic to think that you're never, ever, ever gonna go out? Right, it isn't, right? And this is why a lot of people's budgets don't work because they don't put things in the budget that are realistic. So let's budget 60 bucks. That's not a lot. We're talking $15 a week. That's one movie. And you may not even get any popcorn, right? All right, so the next thing is clothing. Do you have to buy clothes every month? Well, maybe some of us do. No, no, I don't, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but do your clothes last forever? No, this is why a realistic budget, not just plans for what I'm gonna spend this month, but you're also planning on things that you know are going to happen. When your shoe falls apart, I'm sorry, that's not a surprise, right? Your shoe has been falling apart for quite some time and you just keep ignoring it. I recommend that you put $25 a month into a savings account in order to be able to buy clothes when you need them. So your shoes fall apart so after a couple of months, you'll have $75 in that account. That's enough for a pair of shoes. And then you just keep putting that 25 bucks in. So in a few months, when you have a little bit more in there, then you can buy something else that's worn out. You've got a big fancy job now, and you have to realize that you're going to need to dress for that job. And so you need to buy things that are going to be appropriate for that job. And again, when we get to the end and we need to make some adjustments, we certainly can, but these are not areas that I recommend that you cut out just because your clothes will wear out. And oftentimes what breaks people's budgets is when it does and all of a sudden you don't have the money to be able to do it because you weren't planning for it. Okay. How about your cell phone? Average cell phone bill is about 70 bucks a month. Now, if you find a cheaper one, that's great, but we'll go there later, right? Again, we're doing a simulation, so we're gonna say we're spending 70 bucks a month on our cell phone bill. How are we doing on time? All right, so then telephone, that's a landline. Do you need a landline? Maybe not. 
let's say, and for our simulation purposes, we're going to need one. So we'll put 25 bucks in there. How about cable, internet? If you're only spending $15 a week on entertainment, you're going to need something else to fill your time, right? So you're going to need some sort of cable or internet access. On average, that's about 65 bucks a month, okay? Now remember, we, got a, we have an apartment that's 10 miles away from our house, right? So we're gonna be driving 20 miles a day. That's 100 miles a week. Let's say you wanna go out on the weekends. We don't have a whole lot of money, so maybe we're just gonna go driving. And we'll drive another 100 miles on the weekend. So that's 200 miles a week. We're driving 800 miles a month, and that's going to equate to about 80 bucks a month in gas, even with the really nice economical gas car that we bought, which was the Honda. All right, now you have gotta pay for your gas and your PG&E bill, and of course in the winter it might be a little bit more, in the summer it might be a little more, and then in the spring and fall it will average out, but they say average first-time apartment users spend about 50 bucks a month on electricity. All right, so now you gotta do your laundry. Now, I personally don't buy things that need to be dry cleaned because I don't wanna pay for it. And so I buy clothes that don't have to be dry cleaned. So, and obviously, in our apartment does not have a washer and dryer, so we have to go to the laundromat. It costs $3 to wash, $2 to dry. Do you do all of your clothes in one load? I wouldn't, unless you like pink underwear. And some people do. But you probably want whites, and colors, so you're gonna need at least two loads a week, right? That's $10 a week. You're spending $40 a month just on laundry, okay? Now, do you need to fix your car every month? No. Are there things that are gonna break down on your car? What? Tires could go flat. Tires? Hopefully not on a monthly basis, but what are things that wear out more frequently on your car? What do you have to do? What kind of maintenance do you have to do on your car regularly? Oil, change. Oil changes. Brakes need to be replaced. You gotta plan for the tires, the, the windshield wipers, all of these things. I love it when somebody comes to me and says, oh my God, my tires wore out. I need new tires. I don't have it in the budget. This is so such a surprise. Is it really a surprise that your tires wore out? Are they gonna wear out? then you have to budget for it, people. This is what I'm talking about, okay? So not every month, but I recommend you open up an auto savings account, and just like we have the clothing savings account where we're putting 25 bucks a month in there, let's put 50 bucks a month in our auto savings account so in three months when we have to get the oil changed, we've got money in there. When our car, our tires do wear out, we've got money in there. This is what we're planning for the future. These things happen, people, they're not a surprise, all right? And then what about hobbies? Does anybody like to do things on the weekend that might cost a little bit of money? My mom's an avid quilter. They just did an inventory of her fabric, and much to her dismay, my dad uh, valued it at about $18,000. In her house, she's got $18,000 worth of fabric. I'm like, good mother, what are you doing? Uh, but things cost money, right? Maybe you like to, uh, like you're into sports and you gotta buy some sports stuff, or maybe you're into gaming and you gotta pay your online monthly gaming fee or whatever that happens to be. Maybe you're into church and you don't want that collection thing to pass by you without being able to put a little bit in there, right? Whatever your thing is, plan a little bit, figure out what you like to do and make sure you include a little bit of that in your budget. All right, so once we do that, our total budget, uh, our monthly expenses are 2660. Our monthly income is 2,500. Uh-oh. We got a bit of a problem here, don't we? We do. We have a big problem, right? Because we don't have enough money to cover. We don't make enough money to cover the expenses we've already budgeted. All right, we got to make some changes. We got to make some decisions. So what are we going to do? How are we going to cut our budget? Well, let's think about that. All right, so we said we were gonna be, now, the first thing people wanna do is just take it right out of here, right? Oh, if I just cut out the savings account, perfect. I got a balanced budget. Why is that not the right idea? That's exactly right. You can never cut from this, all right? Say, don't ever cut from savings. You need to make adjustments in other areas. If you are not putting money into savings, you are not preparing for your future. Because it's not just a house that you want to buy or a car on a house you want to buy someday. What else do you want to do someday? Vacations. Vacations. And then eventually, you want to retire, right? And you might think now, well, oh my God, that's so far away. 
It'd be here before you know it, people, all right? And if you're not saving for it, you're not gonna be prepared. So I would say, let's cut a little bit out of our grocery budget. So we were gonna spend $10 a day, right? That was $70 a week. Let, let's cut that back to $60 a week and just stay a little bit less on groceries. So we'll save a little bit there. And let's not eat out as much, all right? So we'll cut a little bit out of that, maybe $5 a week. So we'll only spend $20 a week for eating out. And, uh, and let's cut out our entertainment, right? I know we were only spending $15 a week as it was, but all right, so we're only gonna get to go to the movies maybe twice a month instead of weekly. All right, that's a, that's a sacrifice we can make. And we already said that we could probably find a cheaper cell phone bill. Might be time to go to Metro PCS, save a little bit of money on our cell phone bill. We also already said we really don't need that landline, so we can cut that out as well. And, uh, and then let's say we're not gonna drive on the weekends. Right? That extra 100 miles on the weekends, we just can't afford it right now. So we're just going to budget for the money we need to get back and forth to work. So we'll cut our gas budget down as well. And you know what? Worst case scenario, we'll do laundry every other week instead of every week. So we can cut a little bit about out of our laundry budget as well. All right. If we do all of that, we've cut our monthly expenses now down to $24.95. And... Um, that's supposed to be clapping. So, <laughs> congratulations, you have a balanced budget. That's how it, exactly how it works. All right, let's talk a little bit more about that. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're gonna make it, I think. All right, because remember what our challenge was way back before, right? How do we live comfortably on our salary, yet still be able to save for the future? So how'd you do? Right, let's look back at our savings account, right? We still have that $250 in savings, maybe more if we were a little bit more frugal when we were furnishing our apartment, and we're putting $250 more each month into that savings, right? So we're able to cover all of our monthly expenses, and we're able to save for the future, right? That's how you create a balanced budget. But be careful, right? A lot of times people um, think of a budget as a diet. It's a financial diet. And you've got to make sure you plan for those things that are important. So a really good budget is going to help keep you out of debt and allow you to save for the future. Because again, we want a better car. We want a nicer house. We want to be able to retire someday. None of those things are going to happen for you if you're not saving for your future. So having a balanced budget will enable you to do that. The key though, guys, Again, obviously we were in a simulation right now, so you're gonna need to look at your own spending. You're gonna need to put these categories in for yourself and figure out what your actual expenses are. But when you do this, and I encourage you to be realistic, because we talked a lot about that. It's not realistic to say you're never gonna eat out again. It's not realistic to say you're never gonna go to those gaming websites again. So you've gotta make sure you include things that are going to make you happy um, while having a balanced budget. Because as soon as you take those things out, what's gonna happen is you're still gonna do them, and then your budget goes out the window, and you wonder why you have to hit your credit cards all the time, and why all of a sudden you find yourself in a really bad financial position. So make sure it's a realistic budget when you put it together. But at least we talked about some of those things that are gonna happen and come up so you can kind of uh, remember that it's not just my loan payments I have to budget for, my rent, that there's so much more to living on your own than those, those simple things.